everyone, welcome to our continued webinar series, Managing Agile Projects with Project for the Web. In fact, let me uh, share my screen. I'm Tim Runcie, I'll be your host today and, and get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is blending you know, agile methodology certainly with uh, technology. In fact, these marriage of these two pieces is actually one of the hottest topics that happens to be out there both in the nonprofit world, in the government space, in the for-profit world. Everyone is looking at how to do more with less, but also really looking at the factor that we need to have light touch to manage some of what's going on in the overall world and activities of things that need to get done. So as we go through today, you know us, we've been around for quite a while doing project management and technology. In fact, the fun part of this is also getting to look and share some of the latest features with Project for the Web, which is one of Microsoft's latest project management tools that really is designed to help organizations begin to mature and move forward through uh, and faster in managing their projects. Now, whether it's an agile or a waterfall, you might pick up benefits from here, but our focus today is gonna really help people understand a little bit about how you can apply that. So my background again is the CEO and president of AdvisorCon. Uh, we've been doing this for a while, as well as being a project MVP. I'm very passionate about helping people quickly find the right solution for what they're working on. In fact, today we're gonna get into discussing a little bit of the community questions that have come up. I think you might even just ask uh, a question that was posted by a user for us. And then we'll talk about the agile key values. Some people really aren't understanding, you know, what does it mean when you say agile? Is agile a formal discipline? Is it informal? I hear lots of flavors. I heard, you know, ITIL. I heard uh, uh, complex uh, programming or test-driven development or what's Scrum. And so all of these things kind of fit into an ecosystem. Our goal today, though, is to help you quickly migrate through, understand what and how to leverage both the methodology, and then show you some really cool stuff with Project for the Web. So let's get started. If we think in terms of Agile, like an approach, and a lot of people have gone through, whether it's Prince2 or PMI's waterfall, where you do a lot of planning and you go from the initiation phase to the planning phase to the execution and build, you control and monitor, and then you close out your project. All of those things are happening, but when we think about Agile, Agile is a series of iterations. In fact, if you look at the diagram here, you notice that, hey, listen, we might start with the first iteration. Then we might go to a second iteration. And finally, as you work your way through in an iteration number four, which might be a little bit overkill, you reel it back to, hey, what did I actually need? And in that process, the requirements of what's being delivered may actually evolve. And in some cases, a better product is delivered. So again, the incremental plan of having, hey, listen, I'm going to go through delivery one, delivery two, and delivery three is really, I'm not just working on certain pieces, I'm beginning to clarify the vision of what we're trying to do, even though we're managing work and deliverables. Now, thinking about Agile itself, um, there are many different approaches. All of these are what we call CAS, Complex Adaptive Systems. And what that means is essentially that we look at a way of, of solving complexity. Uh, for those of you that have lived through VUCA or you've heard uh, like we call VUCA events or COVID is a great example. Uh, there's so much volatility. Uh, VUCA stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. These are things that in some organizations you have to be able to innovate and deal with. And yet if you do infinite planning, as it said, no, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. In terms of us going forward and really engaging, what we wanna be able to do is say, you know what, we can adapt. And we didn't put too much time into something that won't be delivered. So whether we get into extreme programming or pairwise programming, talking about how we're actually doing some of the work, or Scrum or Kanban, where we use kind of this post-it note boards and we move things around, how things are organized and planned, or holistic approaches or just-in-time models like Lean, you hear the term Six Sigma. All of these are really designed to say, you know what, there are approaches to help you get through managing things in a much more agile fashion. And whether you pick one or multiple disciplines, or you're thinking about, hey, as an entire organization, we're gonna do SAFE scaled agile framework, the whole organization is going to use it. Again, agile, right? We're gonna go through iterations. 
So what's kind of cool about Agile is that the benefits are there. In fact, a lot of technical teams and customers really love an Agile process. You focus on the solution. We want to get to value as quickly as possible. I don't want to wait six weeks or six months to get a final uh, view of my forms and my interface or what I'm building. I want to begin rolling it out and testing it. Uh, in many cases, even if you think about the design companies who build buildings, what do they do? They build a model scale of what it looks like and they move the trees around and they, they kind of play with it. Even though it is balsa wood and some paint, the idea is that they're modeling, right? We're looking at what it might look like and we can tweak and tune that before we've done a lot of work. So again, zero in on that high value. Uh, you'll hear the term Semper Fidelis if you're in the Marine Corps, you know, which means always faithful. Uh, or you'll hear the terms in other places, esprit de corps, you know, the different colleges. Well, um, I came out of construction and, and in the US Navy, the construction was the Seabees. And we always called it Semper Gumby, always flexible. And for those of you that are old enough to remember Pokey and Gumby, the uh, toys, they used to be able to just wiggle them around. That is really what we're looking at is how to be flexible as we move forward. And again, that continuous process improvement is helpful especially if you have suddenly shortfalls or perhaps some of your resources get pulled out, you're still focused on what got done first was the highest value. Now remember, Agile as a methodology or a discipline or an approach does have some disadvantages. There are some concerns there. I have a lot of CEOs go, I hate Agile. Everybody on my team and organization wants to do it, but I never have vis visibility of what's happening. And so if we do Agile in a vacuum, what you'll find is a lot of people are solving the problem six times over. They did it in a vacuum, so they did it three different times in three different departments. The other part is that when you get into really working with a customer and, and you're evolving the requirements and kind of zeroing in and changing that, sometimes you need to make sure you circle back and focus on the prize. What are we trying to accomplish here? I mean, that's a great feature and a benefit and a drop down, uh, drop down combo box or, hey, that marketing uh, plan sounds wonderful and that's great, but are we trying to do this in six different languages? Maybe we need to focus on our, our marketing plan and say, let's zero in on the, the local dialects where we're going to be implementing this, or maybe not every product needs to go to every market. So the idea is that losing sight of the prize can happen very easily. And this is why you do want to surface it back to your original business goals and objectives. Again, sometimes in all that iteration, people don't track things. And so you lose the visibility across project program, and in some cases, the portfolio visibility. This is where product for the web and the scheduling technologies are out there that will really help sell that. Again, lack of documentation, there's so much going on in a short period of time that in many cases people are not documenting. And that's really important to make sure that we are putting notes and comments as well as storing those in places that are helpful. And again, if we think in terms of just making sure we get to the information, it, it always will be about those metrics. So in thinking through some of these, we talk about you know, some of the agile values, which is we have these backlogs of items that we can check into. Uh, we hear terms like JIRA or Azure DevOps in terms of terms of technologies that are out there. Planner, Microsoft Project Team owns Planner and they use this. In fact, it's one of the most, if it, if it is not the most highly added app in Teams, it certainly has been over the years, which is I need a quick place to track what we're doing and I want to get in, get out and get back to work. So as we prioritize things what we call buckets or sprints or how we organize the workload, that needs to be quick and simple. And today you're going to get a taste of that with the project for the web pieces. So if we think about this, whether I'm using Planner or Azure DevOps or I've got complex other tools that I'm working with, a lot of these will integrate into Teams. In fact, I have a lot of fun here as we work with Teams. In fact, let me just bring my Teams window over here. So as I drag and drop this in so you can see this, is that Teams is amazing, right? We can actually collaborate. We can organize things into, into Teams, or in some cases, we'll have different channels. So if I'm thinking about, hey, what we're working on, or perhaps maybe this is our academy, and then we have a series of classes or archives, or what's the Visio class sessions that we're working with? Again, we're organizing this and putting it together. And as you click on these channels, you know, you can say, hey, we got files, we got wikis but I can add things, including if I said, hey, I wanna add project. Well, I didn't even have to type it here. We can look at what we can pull into that overall environment. 
So if I say, hey, let's add project as a particular artifact or an object, or if I want to build my own, you'll find that both non-Microsoft products are uh, available to be added here as certainly as you manage this. And if we think in terms of maybe going to a channel or even hidden channels, again, we can centralize that in an easy to use collaborative environment by simply organizing the fact that all of this sits with SharePoint under the hood. So our folders, our documents, our planner boards, all of this are really accessible and we're just using a nice, simple, quick to easy to use plan, including if I want to look at project for the web and say, well, listen, I'm still in Teams. There's my chat, there's my planner board, and I've got some reports here, but let's look at what's going on here. As long as you've got the licenses allocated, your team isn't hopping anywhere and the people who are managing the workload can actually come in and say, you know what? That will take longer. Is that going to have a downstream impact? Let's see. This milestone looks like we're anticipating this happening on a particular day and time. Okay, well, what happens if we found out that supply chain needs to take a bit longer? Or what if I need to do some what-if scenarios here and add some attachments or milestones or comments or notes? All of this is available. And what we want to be able to do is help you leverage that in terms of the workload. So I'll come back to this. I'm kind of showing how Teams will fit into the equation, which is great. It actually provides you kind of a collection of items in the same place. So thinking through kind of the dangers and the benefits, let's jump into a little bit of the understanding and let's see how Project for the Web will work. For those of you that are new to some of the project tools, you have to understand that there are really three tiers of, of what gets done, right? You have your scratch pad at your desk. You have little action item to-do list. Uh, many cases, people do these in SharePoint or Excel, but the idea is that I got tasks that I'm working on. Whoops, <laughs> let's not go that far. And then maybe I collaborate with a team. So maybe I'm using a Monday.com or I'm using different tools that are out there and say, you know, I just need kind of a team to collaborate on a collection of items. Planner is very commonly sitting right here in this work management space. But at some point, the grow up story says, you know, I don't just want to know what we're checking off the list. What if something slips? What is the downstream impact? How do we look at effort? How do we look at milestones? How do I sort, filter, and prioritize that? Or how do I drive that into a dashboard? And whether you go all the way up to the top of the spectrum, which is project operations, which actually has the uh, scheduling engine of Project for the Web in there and has a much robust uh, environment, but maybe again, that's too big of a tool for you, or you're gonna use classic Microsoft Project, the desktop and Project Online, or maybe you've got a Project Server version. You're really at a higher maturity level of some of the things that we have. And again, we talk about the pinnacle of good tools. There are some great examples, but maybe what your organization needs is quick, simple. I don't have more than 500 rows. I really need to keep this visible, but at the same time, we need to get in, get out, and get back to work, but I want to nest it. And so you'll see Project for the Web fits right in the middle here, and it's helpful. And continuing along the ecosystem of task and work management, Microsoft is moving to the fact that we might be working with things like Amazon Alexa, or perhaps I'm pulling Samsung reminders, or I've got workflows coming from different places. But these hubs in the center, Outlook, Teams, Planner, Microsoft To Do, and of course, Project in all of its form, sit in a place where you can say, you know what, I need to kind of centralize one version of the truth. This is really important. How do we do one version of the truth? Means your data needs to be in the same place. I don't touch it in five different places. And I may want to capture these tasks in other areas. So let's have some fun here. and Let's take a look at just kind of building across and using Project for the Web. So this is the landing page in Office 365. If I come over here to the waffle and I go down here and click on project, or if you want to hit your all apps, you can always surface that and make it appear. And we get kind of a landing page, which in this case, I've got, you know, legacy project. I've got something called roadmap, which we'll see here in just a moment. But you can always fire off a new project. Basically, if I want to even import from the desktop, I've got the things that say, you know, that old project schedule I had a couple years ago, pretty heavy. I just want to bring that in and use it in Project for the Web. So this is where that kind of that blank project comes in. And that information can be shared and surfaced depending upon who's looking at it. So as we think about really building one of these, you can certainly add them and put them together. But let's take a look at a project and then I'll just kind of build one with a few tasks so we don't look at me typing all day. 
So here's an example of us that have spun up a project schedule. And you'll notice here that we've got this grid view, which gives you kind of the spreadsheet view or the items that you can work with. And what's fun here is I can come in and just say, hey, look, as I'm looking here, I can hide the columns. I can certainly come out here and add some of these custom columns. If I want to add a new field, I can actually pick from a series of text, date, number, some yes, no, flag fields, et cetera. We get to name them and I can localize these so that it's easy to work with. So here's a punch list. In fact, as we're working through here, you may even decide that while I'm working on permitting, I want to open the details of this. So here's the start and finish. In fact, this one is actually behind, so it's flagging me in red. And I can go through here and define what my buckets are. In fact, you can actually add these or modify them, but I'm looking at how I organize my data. And if I do want to add an attachment, I will click here. And as long as I've added a resource to the schedule, it says, ah, you can grab files off your computer. Uh, you can pull things from Teams. So Microsoft Teams has kind of a SharePoint uh, environment where we can go get it. Or if you have a link to a URL, you certainly can grab that. So, yep, I can come out here and if I want to go to my project management tools and certainly say, hey, Tim, I want that milestone tracker you were showing me, add it. Oops, I added it twice. <laughs> That's a pretty hot commodity here. So, yep, let's remove that. Let me add another one so you can just see how easy this is. Grab a file. It's a, it's a picture of a receipt. Right. Let's say that uh, somebody is uh, keeping track of their expenses and we need to find some of those. So if we got cost control or cost benefits, absolutely. Add them, track them, come up here and put some notes helpful to work with. But again, I'm in a grid view. I can also move into something that is very common in the Agile world. We call this basically a planner board or a board or a task board or Kanban where the idea is that I can create these buckets that say, well, listen, while I'm out here, let's add a bucket. So I've got this high, low priority sprint to effect. Do I have low priority? I don't think I do. I don't. So let's add a bucket here. We'll call this low priority. And when I add this, certainly can move it over here and say, you know what? Here's the next stuff that's coming up. That's great. But um, there's a couple high priority items that I don't need. And so I can move these around and organize it in a fashion that tells me, what are we trying to get done? Is it finished? Is it signed off? And again, what you're gonna find with the product for the web is that the same functionality that you have in Planner will be carried, all of it will be carried into Project for the Web. Right now, there's some really cool things like uh, like 25 labels, and there's some other little elements that the engineering team is building. And maybe by the time you watch this, it's probably already there, but that grow experience grow up from, hey, I'm planner to, listen, I really need to create relationships and dependencies is going to be important for us. And so not just looking at the buckets is how I've organized, but how long is somebody taking to get that work done? Who's actually assigned to this? Are there some exit criteria that I want to add here that just says, well, listen, I've got scope and my exit criteria might be signed approval. And so I can create these lists. I can templatize this in terms of saving my information and sharing it. So from a very lightweight or an agile perspective, you can very quickly come in here and manage these. In fact, I'm gonna build one for scratch. I'll show you how easy that is. But inherently taking advantage of do uh, documentation, notes and attachments are helpful. And these views let you toggle back and forth. So you can kind of rotate from, hey, it's very much a spreadsheet oriented view over to the fact that maybe I need just more of this planner-esque or this Kanban view that says, you know what, maybe these are high or low priority. Or if I want to come in here, I can still work on the same set of details, including work, effort, and duration, and manage these. And then go in and quickly pivot over to a timeline view. And again, I can kind of zoom in and zoom out. So if I want to see it at a glance and go, wow, there's a couple links here. Maybe I don't need this one all the way. So as I click on my predecessor successors, I might come in and say, you know what, task number two, perhaps I want to uh, remove that dependency. And so we can kind of clean these up and make sure, yep, and maybe even task number four probably don't need that as well. And so as we look at some of the tasks and the activities as we've got visibility where we can manage and zoom into the overall dates and data. But again, adding new tasks is helpful. So let me build one. Let me just show you how easy this is. Let me talk about the moving parts and we'll play around with some of these. But the idea is that whether you want to use product for the web quickly to manage your agile projects or you need to collect these into one environment. 
Microsoft makes available a power app. Uh, it's called the Project Accelerator. In fact, now it's really called the Project App. And you can download this from GitHub along with Power BI reports that are designed to say, you know what? Not just a bunch of loose projects, but I can collectively put them in here. And if I want to run in and see the dashboards of where the work and the activities are, I have visibility and availability to that, including as I think through my resources or resource availability, I've got a lot of information as I look at effort work over time. So as you've gone from a simple checklist or a spreadsheet to a planner board, or maybe you're saying oh, there's more to it, we begin to get the benefits of having a full project scheduling system with some of the collections that we're able to bring together versus having to do it all locally and just having independent files. So let's go back. Let's just quickly build a new project. and I'll just show you how easy this is. So I'm going to create blank new project. And of course, here I'm going to give it a name already in. So we're going to go ahead and call this project for the web agile demo. And when I come in here, it says, okay, well, who's going to be the project manager? Really kind of the owner of this schedule. And I'll say, let's start typing. And notice that if we are in your Active Directory, you're able to add yourself here as a list. In fact, I can continue going through. Here's the overall project. You know, I'm not going to start this on the 27th. I actually started on Monday. And it's important for us to kind of work through some of the items that we have here. We can also change a calendar by using different templates. So then again, you might think of, hey, listen, we might be a 24 hour shop, but we've got some options here. But now once I've got my data, I literally have the information to say I can add it or quickly delete it. But this creates a security group, basically just like Microsoft Teams. And now I can go in, quickly start adding my tasks. So let's clear this up a little bit. I might just say, hey, we're gonna do some planning and then we're gonna do some customer survey We'll do some customer surveys. And then what I want to do is I want to review the survey. And then we're going to prioritize, prioritize the options. Then we're going to build key options. We're going to test them and deploy. Again, probably need a little bit more description here because that's Dply, and I'm not sure what Dply is, but uh, we did have a Dave, Dave Ply that worked for Advisacon at one time, and he retired, uh, been with us for quite a while. So a lot of fun here, but if I'm going to say test, deploy, and then I'm going to say sign off. Could sing it off, but I think we'll sign it off, and we'll add it here. And notice I've got this quick look column. Again, something new that is part of Project for the Web, and we'll get into the, our ability to say, hey, listen, I want to add or visualize our information. Now notice here, I'm in a grid view. So if I say, you know what, if I wanna put the durations here, as like, that's about three days, this is gonna be six days, review the surveys is about one day, I'm gonna make it two days, because I've got some people who may not be able to make it. Then we would need about four days to prioritize. Building, of course, very important, we're gonna need two weeks, two W, and I'm just typing these in here. And if I wanna see other columns, like, hey, what percent complete is it? Or perhaps I want to put, hey, what is it dependent on? Or what's the level of effort? How many hours do we think that's going to be? Well, great, it's three days, but really, is it five hours? And uh, this is like 30 hours of work with a team of people working on that. And really, I need about uh, you know six hours to review and comment. We can begin building these. And if I go through and I say, hey, it's right now, we can look at who it's assigned to. Oh, hey, wait, there's Tim. He's on the uh, project, but no one else is. So let's go ahead and add Ken into our list here. And then as he says, you know what? He's not part of your security group. Do you want to add them? So remember, if we want to bring in external people and we've granted licenses, we certainly can do that. But I'm going to create and assign. Or maybe David uh, Benz, who heads up our PMO, he is the man of the hour. And I'm going to assign him and add him to this particular activity. And so as I go through here, I can certainly click and pick. I can assign. I can mix and I can match, but notice how easy this is to set up. Now I go out here and I might have a board view. So again, this bucket one, or many cases, I'm gonna call this my backlog, right? So we're talking about agile. So if this is my backlog of things that need to get done, now I may wanna add a, a priority of how I organize these. We're gonna go ahead and say, you know, week, we'll say week 12. Now this could be a certain date, could be a time could be a priority here. So I might just say high priority. 
And again, the idea is that I can take these and say, you know what, sign off, uh, that's gonna happen, but that's gonna happen at the end of the schedule. So we're gonna look at week 12, or if you're talking about sprints, which usually are a period of time where you focus on, on key values. So here's sprint one, and let me add sprint two. And maybe instead of just high priority here, I might, might put high priority review. I literally can come in here and begin moving the schedule around between what's happening in sprint one, what's coming next, and using it as a Kanban board, including assigning people to that visibility. If I switch over to my timeline, of course, we didn't create dependencies, right? But I can come in here and say, you know what? I think this is gonna feed this activity. And you know what? This actually is gonna feed two different things. We're gonna start prioritizing and building key options at the same time. And of course, while we'll do those in parallel, we're going to test. And when I wanna come in here and say deploy, well, gee, I better put some durations in here. Let's open up the details. So if I wanna look at you know, what it is and bucket it's sitting at, and if I wanna set a start or a finish, in this case, I'm gonna say this is gonna be five days. There it is. And if I wanna to get to sign off and make sign off basically a zero, it's my milestone, can manage that directly. And as I'm looking at this view, I may want to zoom out a little bit, but notice again, very agile-esque. I can touch these, I can link them together. And if you realize that's going to take less time, you can move it. You can even actually kind of defy the laws of the links here by moving it around. And of course, what it did, it says, well, wait a minute, we have a finish to start relationship. I think I'm going to break that off and kind of constrain it. But again, the idea is that I've just kind of hard coded the dates but I can switch back and forth between my views and the information available, including starting to filter. Hey, where are we building, right? Oh, there's the build. Uh, hey, listen, I wanna prioritize. Oh, there it is, planning, prioritize. And if I wanna clear all the terms that I'm filtering for or looking at what's started and progress or completed, I certainly can do that. And if I've added that percent complete, Again, having that visibility, I certainly can type these in here in terms of the details, or if I'm in my timeline view, you know, moving or manipulating this. But again, quick, efficient, easy to work with. And whether I said, hey, you know what? I was planning 59.38 hours and I did really 40 hours worth of work. Project's gonna tell me, hey, we've got about 19 hours remaining and notice it starts to progress that for us. Or if I click on another one here and I'm saying, you know what, from an effort perspective, I'm really looking at what is that? It's really more like 25% complete. Now, that's basically how easy this is. So in put, terms of putting them together, we now can take this type of information and begin surfacing into our dashboards, our reports. We can look at timeline information. Again, and this is a report pack that Microsoft's made available. So from a quick and easy perspective, in terms of Agile using Project for the Web, this is really taking organizations by storm as they're thinking about how can they maybe grow up from simple list, but yet put their activities and what they're tracking and progressing in one place and making that visible and available, whether it's two reports or in a collection or just I'm managing my own work activities. So from a recap and summary perspective, uh, this is a fun time to be working in technology because the project management tools, while they're still maturing and growing, they are now putting things out there that really help you think in terms of what is the manifesto from both methodology and technology, right? Can we get in, get out, and get back to work, get to the highest value activities in managing a schedule, or do I need to get into deep earned value? Or if I'm using truly an agile approach to getting things done, I focus on individuals and interactions over processes and tools because really the interactions might help us elicit something better. I want to get to what is a value, whether it's working software or product versus spending lots of time documentation. And again, if you want to do a search for the Agile Manifesto, you'll find a lot of great information out there. But again, for us, from our benefits, we see that this is a great way to begin to be lean and efficient in what you're doing. Do things iteratively, do 20% of the work that gives you 80% of the value. Pareto principle, really allowing you to get to that 80-20, helps you put in place the things that will help you be productive. And again, attaching notes, documents, tracking progress, switching between views that are helpful, or creating dashboards and reports. A lot of this is already out of the box and ready to go. And if you decide to move this direction, I strongly encourage that you take advantage of it. And again, do that crawl, walk, run. 
do a small test. This is not hard to jump into and start working with. And I hope today was helpful. So again, if you're thinking through this and you wanna work more, if you have more questions, reach out to myself or any of our staff. Uh, as we say at, at AdvisorCon, it is one AdvisorCon. So whether you talk to the dev team or the IT team or our project implementation teams, we really wanna help you get the answers that you need. And on the bottom there, if you wanna uh, go to our free channel that we do free learnings on, www.advisorconthinkethic.com. Great stuff. In fact, we've been recording videos on our YouTube channel for the last four plus years. We're going to continue to move there and there'll be free PDUs. So again, hope this helped you. I'm glad to have the time today. Thank you and enjoy.